Hey, Colin Smith here, and welcome to this episode. As a lot of you know, I like to fly my quadcopters around a lot, my DJI Phantoms, and I take a lot of photographs and video, and sometimes I stitch them into panoramas. And one of the things I've been doing for a little while is a thing called Tiny Planet. Now, Tiny Planets are not new, they've been uh, done before, but um, I started applying them to aerial panoramas from the Phantoms, and you can get some really cool results. So a lot of people really got interested in these uh, that I've been doing. And so then they've been asking me, how do you do that? How do you create these little tiny planets? So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the process for creating these cool little tiny planets inside of Photoshop and using the DJI Phantom. Well, what we do basically is we put the Phantom up in the air, or uh, you could also do it just with a regular camera shooting panoramas. But what I'm doing is I'm flying up in the air and then I'm rotating a little bit and then taking another photograph and then continuing all the way around as you can see here in this shot in Laguna Beach and of course this photograph there was actually right there at the end and so what I did is I actually created a 360 degree panorama so what I'm doing is I'm actually flying my quadcopter all the way around taking a photograph taking another one another one until I get a full 360 degree uh, view of the scene. And as you can see here, I'm doing this in the least amount of photographs as possible because there's less room for error this way when we're kind of doing this. So some of the things I found out, one of the things I found out is if I have a photograph like this here, which goes all the way around, but it doesn't actually have any detail. You can see the end is there and uh, actually the end is there and the beginning is here. Notice that these are very similar in texture, and this is just kind of filling with the same texture. So it's actually okay to drop a photograph like this if there's no detail in there. So anyway, let's have a look at the process of sticking these together and creating this panorama. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start and bridge, and I'm going to select them all by selecting the first one, holding down shift, and now I've got all the photographs in that entire sequence selected there. Now what we need to do is we need to get rid of the lens distortion before we can merge them together into Photoshop. So we're just going to right click and open these in Camera Raw. So I'm just going to choose Open in Camera Raw. And with them all selected, you'll see they all select there. Now what I'm going to do is just click Select All. And this way you'll notice all the photographs are now selected. So anything I do here is going to apply to them all at once. So what we're going to do now is just move down to the Lens options here under Lens Correction. And then I'm going to choose Profile, and then Enable the Lens Profile. And you'll notice that the DJI uh, Phantom Vision 2 is right in here. You'll see there's the different cameras there. And, uh, and this is actually, they will shoot in DNG RAW, or they'll shoot in JPEG. Uh, DNG does give a better result, but uh, sometimes it can be problems with the profiles not working. So a lot of the time when I do these kind of panoramas, I'll just shoot in a JPEG. And also I get it much quicker. So if there's a little bit of wind and it's blowing around, um, while I love the dynamic range of a, a DNG RAW file, I'll shoot that most of the time. But in these particular circumstances, I will shoot in a JPEG because I can get the photo quickly while it's rotating through the air without getting thrown too much off course with the wind. So now that I've selected them all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click Done. And then it applies the correction profile to each one of these photographs. So now what I need to do is just merge them together into Photoshop. So I'm going to go under Tools, and I'm going to choose Photoshop. And now I'm just going to choose the Photo Merge option. So this is going to open these full-size images right here inside the Photo Merge in Photoshop. You could choose Auto. We could do uh, Cylindrical would probably work quite well. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use Auto and just click OK for now. And now what it's going to do is it's going to look at these photographs and based on the features, it's going to stick them together. Now, one of the things to bear in mind when you are shooting aerial photographs, when you're doing panoramas, is create a decent amount of overlap. Maybe a little bit more than you normally would in a photograph, because normally you do about a 30% for panorama. But while we're doing these um, aerials, you might want to do a little more overlap, because you get a little more shift, because typically with a camera on a tripod, you're only going to get the horizontal, but with the uh, quad cups, you can get vertical and horizontal shift as well as yawing or rotating, um, or actually not rotating, actually tilting. So you can get different things happening, makes it a little harder to stitch these together. But anyway, here we go. We've got all our photographs stitched together right now. 
And before I do any adjustments to these to prepare them for our tiny planet, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna merge all of these. So just make sure they're all selected and then hit Command E, or that would be Control E on Windows to merge these. Now I'm not really worried about doing uh, a lot of work in here right now. Uh, typically if I do a panorama, I'm gonna go into the adaptive wide angle and I'm gonna try and straighten it and clean it up and do different things like that and go into raw. But the first thing we wanna do is actually just crop this down to a rectangle. So we crop it in as much as we want depending on how much water we want. So uh, notice we took the other photograph out had the other photograph been in there, there would have been a lot of water in this planet. So I'm going to take it to here. Now, one of the things you may notice that when I shot this is very important is I actually started on the outside and went all the way to the other side. If you start in the middle and it splits in the middle, you can have a lot of problems with that. So anyway, let's go up and we're just going to crop this down. Maybe crop it to about there. We could have some weird stuff going on here because we're not showing the full ocean. Like typically when you see things like this, it is nice to show that full feature uh, and it will give us a, less, a few less problems. So I've kind of cropped that down to that area right there. In fact, let's bring it up a little bit more, tighten it up a little, and I'm just gonna hit enter to apply it. Now we've got some little gaps here. I wanna fill in these gaps. So I'm gonna hit the command, click on the thumbnail here, and now this selects all our pixels. And then what we're gonna do is just gonna invert it. So we can choose the select inverse, so I'm gonna go down here under select inverse and now it's only gonna select the transparent areas. So let's go and we're gonna choose select, modify, expand, and the 20 pixels is fine. So what we're doing is actually expanding into these a little bit and now we can fill it with content aware fill. So I'm gonna use the shift delete and that would be shift backspace on Windows and we'll see content aware. And if you're using the latest version of CC 2014, Color adaptation is good to have turned on here, and then click OK. And you'll notice that this will magically fill up the little gaps. It's going to take a moment for this to happen. There we go. And if you don't like what you see, just apply it one more time. So you can apply Content Aware Fill more than once if it doesn't uh, get your areas very well for you. So there we go. The second time around, Command D, turn it off. It got a pretty good job. So now one of the things we're going to bear in mind is when we do this, we want this to wrap seamlessly onto the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to create a selection on this side here, and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit Command J to copy it to a new layer. So we've got this here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around using Command T for free transform, and you can right click or just tap here and flip horizontal. There we go. So what you've got now is you've got this edge. If I shift this over here, you'll notice this edge here is gonna match perfectly that edge. So what we're gonna do is holding down the shift key, I'm gonna drag it to the very end there. And notice that's actually looking pretty good. So what we wanna do is just blend this in. So I'm just gonna create a mask, click on the layer mask, and I'm gonna grab a gradient, a black to white gradient, make sure it's set to linear. And then I'm just gonna click and shift across here applying that gradient and now that creates that nice smooth gradient across there which is going to get rid of a very obvious seam which we don't want so i'm just going to select both of these layers now and merge them together into one layer all right we're almost ready to do our tiny planet there's two more things we want to do one we want to turn this into a square because right now it's a rectangle so we're just going to choose image image size and I'm gonna set this for a square. I'm actually gonna drop the size of this down. Now, if I was doing this for a print project, I'd keep the size as large as I could. But in this case, uh, for the sake of illustration, we don't need to. I'm just gonna do pixels here. And notice we've got 11,000 pixels across and 3,000 up. That's pretty big. So why don't we just make this a little smaller and we'll just do a 1600. And we'll turn off that chain link if it's on, make sure it's off, which it is. We're gonna do 1600 by 1600. So this is just screen res for the uh, sake of this illustration. Click OK. And let me just zoom in there. We can see that we've created this into a square. Now there's one other thing we want to do, and that's we need to flip this. So we're going to hit Command T, right click, and then we're going to choose Flip Vertical. So this time we've got it upside down. Now I'm just going to hit Enter. So at this point here, we're ready to take our panorama 
and turn it into our tiny planet. So here's the trick. We're just gonna grab the move tool here. We're gonna go under filter. So we're gonna go under the filter distort. We're gonna grab polar coordinates. And then here we're gonna do rectangular to polar. If you wanna see what it's gonna look like, just click out and you can see there's our little tiny planet we're gonna get. So let's click OK to apply it. And notice we've got the seamless edge there because we match those edges. And I'm gonna hit Command T. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rotate this around because I, I wanna have it uh, with the earth on top. And if you want, you know, you can rotate it around a little bit more, kind of put it like that. And I'm just gonna hit Enter. So you could go in here and you could clean up these edges the same way we did before if you wanted. But in this case, I'm just gonna show you how I'm doing it. One of the things I notice in here, it's a little bit, uh, we got a little pinching going on, but notice how smooth it is there because of that seamless uh, edge I made. So what we're gonna do is actually just fix this pinching a little bit. Not completely, because I kind of like it, but we're gonna go select that layer and then choose Filter Liquify. Now under the Liquify, you can see here we are, we can zoom in a little bit in our Liquify tool. And I'm gonna grab our, our freeze mask here uh, where's our little freeze mask tool? Actually, I'm going to turn on advanced mode, then we'll see all our other options. So if you don't see those, turn it on there. And here's our freeze mask. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on because I want to protect these areas up here. I don't want those to get uh, liquefied. And pretty much anything outside of there, I don't want to get liquefied. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a uh, area around there. We can make this bigger if you want, just by using the bracket key and I'm just protecting this area here. Let's go across the bridge there, I mean the beach there, and we're just gonna protect that area from being liquefied. So now what we're gonna do is just grab our liquefy tool, and let me go just a little smaller there, and I'm just gonna click and drag to pull this in a little bit. And notice what I'm doing is I'm just reshaping that water there on the beach. And then we're probably gonna go really small for that little pinching area. And we can do that if we don't like it. Let's go in there a little bit. So you can take a little practice here and you can push this out if you want to try and change the shape of this. And you can see you can have a little bit of fun with this. Let me go down here, really small. Grab that little pinch. We can pull it in. And uh, just play around here with different things to kind of hide that. So you get the general idea. You know, there's a lot of different things we could do. We could clone this out later on if we wanted, but let's click OK. That reduces the pinching a little bit, and let's zoom out, and there we go, we've got our little tiny planet. Now what we could do to finally just top it up is we could go under the camera raw, choose filter, camera raw filter here, just to uh, make it look a little better. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it the exposure, just give it a little tweak there, warm it up a little bit. Um, let's set some good blacks in there, and let's grab some whites to give it clarity. Um, not talking about the clarity slide of edging, just clarity in the white so it doesn't look muddy. And we can play around for exposure a little bit. There we go. Now let's recover our shadows, opening up some of that detail in there. So now we're showing some of that. Maybe pull it back just a tad. Let's recover some highlights. There we go. And now I might take the blacks down just a little bit more. And you can see the kind of thing we're getting. Let's increase the clarity just a touch and give it some vibrance. This will really make it look nice. And once again, we could play around with the color temperature a little bit more, depending on what kind of a feel you want. If you want to set the exact color temperature, grab this little eyedropper tool up here and click on an area that should be white, and that will give it an accurate one. And uh, I'm just going to click OK. So that's the process of creating the tiny planets with the DJI Phantom Quadcopters. That's a lot of fun. You can have a lot of fun with them and take them all kinds of crazy creative directions. For more inspiration and creative juices flowing, they're always on tap here at the cafe. So don't forget, subscribe, join Photoshop Cafe, and uh, check me out on Facebook and Twitter at Photoshop Cafe, and head over to PhotoshopCafe.com. See you at the cafe.